Nicole, the aliens are here, and once they're done probing us and stealing all our technology and draining the Mediterranean Sea of its water, they're gonna work up a hunger. And Nicole, once the aliens are worked up that hunger, they're gonna need someone to feed Wait, them. Why don't we just take them to like Marie Callender's or something? Well, is it strawberry pie season? Yeah. Oh hell yeah. This, this is, is a, a hot, hot dog, dog is, is a sandwich. sandwich. Ketchup is a smoothie. Yeah, I put ice in my cereal, so what? That makes no sense. A hot dog is a sandwich. A hot dog is a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? Welcome to our podcast, A Hot Dog is a Sandwich, the show we break down the world's biggest food debates. I'm your host, Josh Sher. And I'm your host, Nicole Anaidi. And today we are debating what is the best Marie Callender's frozen pie? Mississippi mud slide! <laughs> or the, is it the silk pie? Chocolate silk pie? The chocolate silk pie yeah. from Marie Callender's. No, we are warning you of the impending alien invasion. This is not new news. New news! Shout out to Jason Kelsey, friend of the show. Uh, it's from his podcast. Um, but somebody once posed us the question... When the aliens finally land on Earth, what mm-hmm. is the first food that you would feed them? Now, people probably posed this about a year ago, and we were like, this could be a whole podcast episode, but it mm-hmm. is simply too stupid. We need to wait for people to get <laughs> stupid enough to catch up with how stupid we are. And Nicole, <laughs> that time has finally come because of one man named David Grush. David Grush. Tell him about David Grush. What do you know about him? Uh, he, has, he has an interesting face. He has a trusting face. But behind the eyes. Mm-hmm, yeah. I yeah. See, it gives me pause. No, for sure. He, to me, looks like somebody who would be telling me that aliens are here. But not like yeah. the ancient aliens guy that's like... Aliens. Aliens, man. Aliens. Not that guy. But uh, he, he looks exactly like aliens. a person testifying in front of Congress saying yeah. that aliens are here. And well, he didn't say aliens here. He, he, said, he said non-human biologics. That are which, in... Which, UFOs are called UAPs now. Which I interpreted as two dogs <laughs> going on a joyride and the, the co- they were like you know like in like Dukes of Hazzard <laughs> I'm going somewhere yeah, with this yeah, yeah. how like it goes in the air sure 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 and like for a moment that car is an unidentified flying object that's a good point so I think he just found the Dukes of Hazzard's car with two dog like two doggies in it did it still have the confederate flag on it <laughs> oh did it have a confederate flag yeah the Dukes of Hazzard car it was called the General Lee and it had the Confederate flag on the top. They like took it. They like didn't take it off the merch until like way later. Is that true? So you're saying the racist dogs? <laughs> they're flying this car through the air. David Grush sees it, goes testifies in front of Congress. That's the only logical point. It's the only thing that I can think of. Um, no, who is? I saw a tweet yesterday that was like an R.I.P. and was some year anniversary of a, of a monkey. Uh-huh. That the Russian the IKEA monkey. No, it's like a monkey that the Russians sent into space. Aww. And one of the they sent to like two monkeys into space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And one monkey successfully returned. Maggie, look this up. Look up monkey in space. One of the monkeys successfully returned, and another monkey just floated out into space. Um, and it was what like R.I.P. That, that monkey. Oh, because that monkey is a non-human biologic in a you know so do you think that's the that's the non-human biologic that was the U- in the ufo no i think listen there i 2004 had like a big bombshell report they called it the tic-tac-toe incident you know i don't know about the tic-tac-toe incident. i think it was it was fighter pilots in san diego maybe who claimed they saw oh. an unidentified aircraft okay, um, okay. And, and there was video of it but it was just a dot flying around okay you know what i mean um sure. I, i'm not a personal believer in aliens i i don't believe they've ever made contact. I don't think there's a big government conspiracy that they're keeping them from us. Uh, I think other life exists in the universe and I think it's mathematically completely impossible that we will ever make contact with them. Have you seen Prometheus? Yes, I've seen Prometheus. That movie rocks. That movie rocks. I love alien movies. Uh, So many, I read so much sci-fi Tic Tac, not Tic Tac. Call it the Tic Tac Toe incident. (laughs) Oh my God, the Tic Tac incident. Uh, (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) I love I love uh, stories about aliens. I read a lot of Vonnegut, you know, um, The Book of Strange New Things, one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, it's about aliens, you know what I mean? But I don't personally believe that we'll ever make contact. I think it's pretty impossible. I totally think we're going to talk to aliens. Well, do you, do, you, do you believe that there are aliens currently here? Sorry, not aliens, non-human biologics. We know <laughs> what you're implying. Mm, right now, like on Earth's surface? Yes. Yeah. I no think they've way. Been, I think they've been here since like... Since like I don't know, like the nineteen like eleven. Yeah, since ni- nineteen eleven. <laughs> oddly specific year. You know, like how long it takes to travel from any Sweet possibly life. habitable. Yeah, and, and those are like Sweet so life. many light years. Anyways, neither here nor there. 
listen, I know he's testifying in front of Congress, eh, but like, I think he's just a kook. I think there's just kooks out there. No, who can say I things. just, can but I also just know the CIA like, just like plants conspiracy theories to get people to talk about and make other conspiracy theories can, not seem true. It's called COINTELPRO. Look it up. But like, can I just say, yeah, please. Why didn't the lady that was asking him questions, the Congress lady, uh, why didn't she ask if they were dogs? <laughs> <laughs> like, if you let Nicole and I run this place, I swear to God, corruption would be finished. <laughs> UFOs, be dogs would be flying in non-racist cars <laughs> all across the streets of America. It Josh would be rad. Subway I, would be free. If Josh and I were members of the Congress, it would be the most fun Congress ever. Yeah, we're going to launch a campaign right off the back of this podcast. We tried to do that with the hot dog is a sandwich. Yeah, pretty failed campaign. Would be nice, but we <laughs> learned working. a lot from that. We learned we a lot. We made shirts. We made campaign shirts. We made shirts. campaign shirts. We sold some of those shirts. That was good. That was a good time. <laughs> this is a food podcast, ostensibly, right? Yeah, it is. So, no, ostensibly. <laughs> so use that term about. loosely. We're now going to talk about Nicole. Since the aliens are currently here on Earth, according to David Grush and me and Nicole, <laughs> except they're dogs, um, what would be the food that you would serve them first okay. to show them what I was going to say America <laughs> is all about, but it's the world, but also, do you want to see a fun map? I love maps. Do you want to see a fun map, Maggie? If we could put this map up, that'd be super yeah, huge. Yeah, I'm so into um, maps. Hold on. I like... My brother's really into maps. I out the map. My brother used to collect maps, uh, atlases, and he would like draw like roads that like weren't found yet in maps. <laughs> he rocks. Hey, Sal. So okay. this is a map of reported UFO sightings around the world mm. by country. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. As you can see, they're like all in America and a little bit in Great Britain and then none elsewhere. Why? I don't know the exact methodolo methodology that this map was going for, but UFO sightings are a very uniquely American thing oh. because we're paranoid and obsessed with them. And also we have digested so much movies and media and culture about aliens. So if aliens do land, it's going to be in America because we're For the sure. only one that thinks about them. It's like Santa Claus. He's powered by Christmas cheer. Aliens are powered by our own belief in them. So they land in America, Nicole. Yeah. What is the first food that you feed them? Let me ask, let me answer your question with a question. <laughs> I'd rather you answer it with an answer. <laughs> are there, My question no, was the hear question. No, hear me out, hear me out. Are there any food items that do not contain water? Real question. That like have like 0% water in them. That's I mean, a like, real question. I don't know about like 0%, 0%, but like freeze drying food, right, uh -huh, is uh -huh. a way of removing water okay. from food very efficiently. Because in my mind, aside from the Prometheus... Uh, <laughs> Do you hear that? Dude, there's just crickets in our podcast Whoa, room, which is also our kitchen. <laughs> it's also, you know, when we it say used something, to be our office, used to say something funny, crickets. Eh, we're funny, not funny, funny, we're not. We're not funny. Um, okay, like so, so you know how the alien? I'm, I, I think that the aliens that are like Prometheus exist, but also, have you ever seen Signs, the movie Signs? Uh, no, I haven't. Oh, well, okay. Well, there's a movie called Signs, and it's yeah, Night <laughs> Shyamalan, Mel Gibson. Yeah, he Mel puts Gibson. a knife underneath the uh, the door to yeah, see yeah, the reflection. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it. and a spoiler, I seen it. spoiler. Spoiler. Can I tell you the spoiler? spoiler. I'm not okay. Watch it. The aliens are like, they die when we put water on them. <laughs> so I think. That's how the movie signs it? That's the big M. Night Shyamalan reveal in signs? Yeah, they come to a planet. It's water? They come to a planet that's all water, and like, water is what kills them. <laughs> well, no, never gonna watch signs. M. Night, that was M. Night Shyamalan, right? Am I making that up? I, don't know. I feel like making it. It was definitely okay. Mel Gibson. But. <laughs> I think they would eat something that is not water because I think their bodies are not able to digest water. Wait. What do you mean their <laughs> bodies? Who are they? The dogs? <laughs> the the non-human we, we, we know nothing about the non-human biological. Okay, this is just that's okay, what makes Josh, it so tough. It's, it's, it's just this is a thought exercise. No, I agree. I agree. But why are you assuming they couldn't digest water? Because it's signs. <laughs> because the <laughs> movie. <laughs> Here's my thing about this question, okay? What's up? Is that one, I do like this thought experiment. And I think if we were to turn this, we will get to a point eventually. Yeah, where just we're have talking fun. About stuff. Just, just have fun. Hold just on, buckle bullet. up. I think the real thought experiment in this is um, almost like what if there was somebody with amnesia and they had never had food? They, they never oh. remembered food, right? It's just like a wandering traveler. What would you feed them to be most representative of all the food on earth? What is the best for it? But mm. I do want to talk about aliens more because. Okay, okay, yes, yes, yes. Cats can't taste sugar, right? I don't know. That's like a thing. Cats don't taste sweet. Oh, or maybe it's. I think it's sweet. Yeah, I think cats can't take can't like register the taste of sugar. Okay, cute. Because uh, they're carnivores, right? So their bodies don't oh. run on like glucose, I suppose. Okay. I don't know. Is that true? If you know, yeah, they cannot taste sugar. So a cat, which is like very 
similar to us in terms of DNA. Uh-huh. It lives on Earth. It's a mammal, yada, yada. Um, it has fundamentally different taste buds than us. We have no idea what a cat experiences when it eats. We would have no idea what an alien experiences when it eats. We have no idea if they're uh, a version they of eat. eating. Yeah, I mean, plants, right? Fungi have huge neural networks. All that photosynthesis, they're absorbing. You know, and there's some, there's some dudes that listen to Joe Rogan that absorb light through their beehole, and then that gives them testosterone. Sunning. Their sun, they sun their, their Sunning. Tank. They do that, you know what I mean? But I think humans can't normally do that. And so we just don't know at all what these aliens do. But <laughs> for the thought experiment yes. of if there was somebody that had no knowledge of Earth and you wanted to feed them one thing when they got here, uh-huh. what would it be? I mean, what would your strategy be? KFC Double Down. <laughs> you think that the KFC Double Down is the pinnacle of human achievement in food? I think so. I do. It's discontinued, right? Did they it, bring it back? They brought it back temporarily, so they discontinued it, but it was such a cultural phenomenon that it literally like moved to other countries. Oh, wow. And they started making like Double Down burgers, because mm. the Double Down was breaded uh, or it's seasoned. Breaded chicken. Chicken breasts. And then um, a cheese, and then another one? Cheese, bacon, some sort of special mm-hmm. sauce, another thing of breaded chicken, yeah, yeah, which yeah. almost makes it a chicken cordon bleu, right? Cured which pork, cured, cheese, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Chicken on the outside. But that moved to like Indonesia. They did like a double down burger with a beef patty shoved in between. Oh, that's so smart. In the Philippines, check this out, double down hot dog. Oh, no, so nobody smart. Nobody loves hot dogs like, Phil- like the Philippines does. Mm-hmm. Shout out to the Pure Foods hot dogs basketball team. Uh, it's a basketball team called the Hot Dogs. I know. Yeah, okay, good. <laughs> you told me about it. It's my favorite thing. <laughs> you talked about it on the podcast like four times. I want to make a double down corn dog. Do whatever you want. Here's the thing. You take like a chicken breast <laughs> and you cut a hole in it and you shove a hot dog in the chicken breast. Uh-huh. Batter that, fry it. What's to stop you from doing that? <laughs> stop me. Yeah. This is your dish. Well, why haven't You're you going to make, make it for aliens? Why haven't I done it? Because I don't need to do it. I don't like corn dogs. Remember? Well, we don't know what the aliens like, though. They might like corn dogs. That's can't, Everybody likes KFC Double Downs. <laughs> That's a fair point. That's a fair point. But. Lollipop? But you got cured pork products in there. You're mixing meat. Like, what if. Oh, they're kosher? We or don't know. Halal? The aliens could be Jewish. Or or Muslim. Or Muslim. Or Christian. Zoroastrian. Buddhist. Baha'i. <laughs> we just listed. Taoist. We don't know what the aliens' belief system is. I don't think they have a belief system. I think they just exist. I think we should serve them. Wait, what do you mean they don't have a belief system? Every, everything is a belief system. That's not true. I think anything intelligent Is atheism enough, a belief system? No, but I, I think that if like... You, a sci- if, you I think, void, if you are void of belief, does that mean you have belief? No, I think so. I think especially an atheist has more belief than an agnostic, right? Well, yeah, because think, they believe in an omnipresent source. Sure. But which I, are aliens. Potentially. I think that anything intelligent enough to be able to travel here would have some sort of belief system and some sort of... Uh, why would you? Why would you assume... Because I think that um, to be able to collectivize, right? You've read Sapiens. <laughs> I have him, but my dad has told me to read it for the past. He he honestly WhatsApps me videos of like snippets of Sapiens. I love that. Saying, read this, Baba. This is good book, Baba. Read it. Watch it, Baba. And I just don't. I got really bored listening to the book on tape of Sapiens. and started yeah. listening to fantasy football podcasts again. But... Yeah. One of the things that allowed humans to collectivize to be able to work together, right? And that's the essence of science, right? Uh-huh. It's, it's um, working so together? I, yeah, it is. No, honestly, it, it's being able to share data with each other and being able to plateau up once somebody invents something, right? Once once somebody invented the wheel, suddenly then anything else that can... Bicycle. <laughs> bicycle, okay? That was like several hundred thousand years after the wheel. But, oh, yeah, you know what I mean. But once somebody invented the bicycle, then they could invent the car. Car-ish. <laughs> um, can I tell you a quick aside? Uh, I was talking to a... Josh, right now, this is an aside of an aside of, a, of an aside, but yes. All right, so I was talking to a chef, right? And he was like, cool. uh, he was like, man, it's crazy how back in the day, he was talking about a thousand-year-old cookbook. He's like, man, they were able to cook like such complex dishes, like taking peacocks and skinning them and feathering them and then stuffing the insides and redecorating to look like a peacock. All these, And I was like, yeah, man, like this kind of weird medieval but gilded age of food was really incredible. And he goes, yeah, but the thing I don't understand is how could they create such complex dishes if they couldn't invent a car? And I was like, I don't think we're going to see eye to eye on this. The point is, Nicole, the car isn't just a car, right? It's literally a product of a million inventions. That's true. Somebody had to invent a bolt. Yeah. To bolt the car together. Yeah, right? yeah. Somebody, somebody, oh my God, the combustion engine, that was like a miracle. Oh my gosh. That was a miracle. No more animal labor. Yeah, yeah. A we. Uh, oh my God. A car? A wheel? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> the wheel? <laughs> Are you high? Just like a bowl of white rice. Are you Because I think like rice is the most eaten cereal grain. Maggie, can you look up most eaten cereal grains on the planet? Uh, So there's a theory that Marilyn Monroe, right? 
What about her? Knew about the aliens. And that's why they killed her? So the CIA killed I her. I thought it was because she was she was hanging out with JFK. Yeah, and when they were hanging out, what do you think they were doing? Talking about aliens. <laughs> and that's why they, 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 they marked her. double dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's up? Rice, wheat, and corn. Is that the number one, though? Is rice number one? I think I think what I would like to be the alien. <laughs> Okay, let's think about it. Well, the thing I would do first if an alien came up to you and said, I'm hungry, what would yeah, I do? In what language? <laughs> they would just telepathically. Gleep, glop. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be like, here's a Reese's peanut butter cup. <laughs> <laughs> no, they would probably communicate in those circles, like in that movie. <laughs> the heptapods, yeah. Yeah, what movie is uh, that? Arrival. In Arrival. They would probably speak to me in circles, but I would see the circles in my brain because they have <laughs> telepathy. No, Amy Adams had to learn what the circles meant. Yeah, no, but they would just they would just put the circles in my head and then I would know that meant like I'm hungry. And then what would I be? <laughs> so we've established that the aliens can draw circles in your head signifying they're hungry. That's okay. an incredible start to this. But then you now, Nicole, have the, yeah. the task of feeding them. Yes, I do, I do. I don't know. I mean, I mean, I think what I would do. Mm. Have you ever seen those videos? <laughs> Of of in Korea, they put a ba- they sit a baby down, <laughs> and they have like a bunch of different options for the so like they put like a tennis racket and the baby will be super athletic. They put a stack of books, the baby will be super studious. I would do that with different foods, <laughs> and I'd be like the food group. So I'd have like I don't know like cheese and milk on one section, a big bowl of grapes and <laughs> strawberries in another, and then I would have. Steamed vegetables, and then I would have rice and like barley or whatever, uh-huh. and then I would have meat. Very scary if they choose meat. <laughs> <laughs> the meat's just a test on whether they're friend or foe. <laughs> and then, and then the meat, and then um, what's the other one? Fats. I would just have like olive oil and a double lard, and then they would just they would just sit there. I'd be like, okay, take a seat, and then they would pick whichever one they gravitate towards. That's the only way I could see it happening in real life. I give Gleep Glop like a camel crush, you know, be like, this is how we rock in, this is how we rock in California, bro. You want to go to Vance Warped Tour? Um, <laughs> if an alien came up to me and said, bleep, bloop, and I understood that to mean hunger, I feel like I would want to make that alien my best friend. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Men, men in America are lonelier than ever. Yeah. I'll be second you know, This is happening. Is and, and I don't know what necessarily culturally is happening to make, you know, I think it's part of its economic anxiety. I think it's a lot of the I mean? technology. A lot of the technology. You know, we're more isolated than ever. Yeah, uh, dating more apps. More convenience dating apps. I mean, it's, you know, we're kind of like hypersexualized and completely desexualized. And we don't know how to form platonic friendships anymore. But in comes this alien <laughs> into my life, Nicole. Uh-huh. And suddenly I'm like, well, we can hang out. We can go bowling. <laughs> You know go I mean? bowling with the alien? Yeah. Will you feed it food from the bowling well, alley? Well, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> because in this scenario, the first food I'm going to feed it is, it's going to be, it's going to be chicken tendies with honey messy. That's <laughs> it. KFC you know? doubles down. They yeah. want chicken. I think they want chicken. KFC. Well, hold on. There, no, 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 no. There's a, I think there's a reason for this. KFC. I think there's a reason for this. What? Fried what? chicken is one of the most universal foods on the planet. Totally. Every culture out there makes fried chicken. We did a whole podcast that's episode right. about the we best did. fried chicken from around the world. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think we can kill three <laughs> birds with one stone. One, I get to show this alien how super sick I am at bowling, right? Two, are you good at bowling? We're best friends. Now I'll have to get good at bowling <laughs> before we go do that. You Step know what one. I mean? uh-huh. But then two, you know, he and it's gonna be a dude because, like, you know, like dudes he, rock. Okay. And I'd find a dude if like dudes a, rock. If like a if like a female <laughs> alien came up to me, <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah, dudes, dudes rock. rock. If it was a female alien, I'd be like, whoa, I'm engaged, <laughs> you know. And then I'd be like, do you have a male friend? That I can hang out with. We'd go bowling. Um, we'd eat chicken. I could get to show him, you know, one of the world's greatest <laughs> foods and some honey mussy, you know, yeah. over at like Bolero in West LA. Love bowling. That's yeah, where a, I, you, that's, where that's where you take an alien bowling. <laughs> that's where I took my brother bowling. Yeah, Sal can come hang out with the alien too. We're, we'll chill, dude. We'll create a little, you know, men's group. I just think it's so interesting that we assume that the alien would eat the same things we eat, though. Like like matter, like the same sure. matter. Sure, like sure, that, sure. Like what if the alien wants yeah. to jump down on a rock? <laughs> <laughs> what if the alien just wants to go how to like the side of the pyramid of Giza? Like who am I to stop the alien? No, that's a fair point. Like so say we're at Bolero and I mean chicken <laughs> tendies with honey mussy, and you know, we're we're sucking down like a uh, I don't know, like a what's that one beer that I like? Uh-huh. Einstock. Yul, yuling, yul, yuling, yingling, yingling, yingling. No, no, but we can't get yingling in California. Uh, the the Einstock, the Icelandic white ale. Oh, yeah, okay. And like he just eats the bottle. 
Or like he's eating the pin. We're going to get kicked out. <laughs> We're going to get kicked out. Alien gotta, is in there. If, if he's not bothering anybody, what? you're fine in Bolero. You can chill at the Bolero with an yeah, alien. Like, as long why, as do, not why do we assume that the alien would eat the same matter as us? Like we can't just do that. Yeah. Yeah. What, what planet do you think this alien is visiting us from? Do you think it has water or do you think it's a gaseous planet? Do you think it's a rock planet? Yeah, probably a little bit of probably, <laughs> probably a little bit of both. <laughs> From what I know about planets, Nicole, is that a little bit of both? <laughs> Just like a little little Scotch Beach, you know? No, I if no, hold on. If I were to make an educated guess, I'd say I'd say a red dwarf planet. <laughs> red dwarf a red planet. dwarf planet is what I bet the aliens are coming from. Hey, Josh. A little bit of it. You're talking gas versus rocks and water. I'd say like a skosh. Hey, Josh. Yeah, I don't up? know if you know this or not, but this is my favorite podcast we've ever done. <laughs> this, is, this is like the best it's podcast we've ever done. ever. We've talked about so much. Yeah, I think about a lot. <laughs> yeah. In a lot of movies, aliens are portrayed as roughly the same size as us. Yeah, I don't think that's true. That can't be true, Do right? Are bigger or littler? Littler. They're going to be so <laughs> small, which is going to be such a problem when we go bowling. <laughs> How am I, I supposed to tell him? I think they're going to tower over us. I think they're going to be like... Why? Why? I think it's I like... I think they're going to be as tall as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Like, that's the shortest alien. The shortest the short, alien. The shortest alien. It's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. What's the tallest alien? I don't Manute know. Manute Mole? Statue of Liberty? George Mirasan? Statue of Liberty? You know, I don't... I don't <laughs> you're saying there's that big of a range. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar is a seven foot, one seven foot, two inch man. <laughs> yeah. Up to the Statue of Liberty, which, Maggie, how tall is the Statue of Liberty? This is very important to me right now. Height, Statue of Liberty, up to, yes, 305 feet. So you're saying from, humans have a variation from, you know, let's say like, you know, four feet tall. No, when they're born. Like no, 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 when they're, bo- when they're born, how small are humans? They're like. <laughs> you're saying, oh, you're saying a, a, a an infant. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, an infant of this species. Yes. They start out at seven feet yes. to Kareem Dul-Jabbar. <laughs> up, and then they get up to 300 feet. Yeah. That makes sense. I think though. <laughs> Thank Check you. Check this out, though. As as technology advances, yeah, we used to think when we were kids. Do you remember going over to like a friend's house and they had like a huge TV, and you're like, sure. "Oh my god, <laughs> twenty years in the future, TVs are gonna be like movie theaters in everybody's house." And then what? Yeah. What are the screens that everybody watches stuff on now? Little, little in my palm, so tiny, like this. They are so small. Exactly. Just this, like this. Show, show the people how small that screen is. <laughs> You ever, seen, one you ever seen anything like that? This used to be called a television, and it was huge. <laughs> and we thought that's the direction it was going. What I'm saying is, as technology advances, we get smaller and smaller. You I'm know what I mean? Crying. Soon iPhones will be the size of a postage stamp. They got closest to the iPad Mini. iPad Mini. iPad Mini. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think what the if, aliens are going to be... Um, like, oh, my God! They're wh- going to be Lilliputian in stature. I know what the aliens are going to eat. What's that? All of the, oh, all of the waste. All of the tech waste <gasps> that we've been making. Oh. I think... They're going to, I think that the aliens are going to come, they're going to eat all of our trash, and then the world will be solved of global warming. Yay! And then the Christians all go to Jerusalem and get raptured up, and then the Jews stay. That's what I think is going to happen. When you said you know what the aliens are going to eat, and you start saying olive, I thought you said olive garden. I was like, oh, yeah, uh, unlimited soup, salad, and breadsticks. No, no, no. That's a good option no, no, for the aliens. Gonna all of our, they're going to eat all of our tech waste. And, like, you know, like, you see these, like, really sad videos of, like, the Ganges River and there's, like, yeah, trash in it and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the aliens are going to come and just go. <laughs> <laughs> but you think there's something unique about trash that they want. <laughs> How do they no, know it's trash? It's not, it's not trash. It's, listen, oh, they're coming here to help. Yeah, let me tell they're you. Come, they, know we're, they know we're in trouble. One man's trash is an alien's sure, trash. Sure, sure. I get that philosophically, but I'm I'm wondering why they prefer to eat that and not the fresh materials. It's because they understand that the humans no longer need it. Yeah, so these are like um, friendly god aliens that, that we are Yeah, I told you, Prometheus on. I- aliens that are scared of water, that like <laughs> the aliens from signs that speak to us in circles telepathically like an arrival. Keep up! I watched a movie once where they made friends with an alien and they drank a bunch of beer with it and they had a fun time. What it was, was a Mark Paul Goslar and it was called Beer Money. Maggie, can you Google that movie real quick? <laughs> Because then there's another alien. Do you not think it's a real movie? <laughs> no, honestly, I might have hallucinated it. Yeah, you got to do Beer Money movie and then a Mark Paul Gosselar. That's right. That's Mark Paul Gosselar. There it is. Wow. Yeah, 2001, fantastic movie. They find an alien. It's kind of a spoof on E.T., but they drink beer uh-huh. with the alien and they like oh, smoke pot and they party. Oh, we didn't even talk about E.T. Oh, I've never seen it. Did you know that E.T. likes Reese's Pieces? 
Um, that was paid ad placement from the Hershey's Corporation. Was right? it really? Of course, dude. Anytime you see any of that stuff, that's just paid. That was that's product placement. That's paid. But I don't know. Something about Reese's Pieces sounds like that was just a creative choice. No, like they were definitely Pretty trying sure. to market Reese's Pieces at the time, and huh. then they paid to put that in the movie. That's Did they how... ever take Reese's Pieces up to space? That's a good. That's a good question. <laughs> That's the thing I don't know. <laughs> well, what do we know about space That's food? We crazy. did an episode about you... it. We freeze dried our own space bacon. Yeah, once. we did. We made space bacon. Um, oh my god, dehydrated ice cream. We didn't make that, but they used to sell astronaut it. astronaut ice cream. I remember to, that. They used to sell Tastes it. Tastes pretty bad. Tastes like stale cotton candy. I loved it. But it was okay. yeah. I went to the. Um, can I tell you another thing? Of course. I hate space. Like you don't want to go to space ever. No, no, no. All the kids were like, I want to be an astronaut, and I was like, Why? What are you going to find up there yourself? Certainly not. Anything different than down here? No. Uh huh. You know what I mean? I, and I don't like learning about space. Um, and and, and okay. I think we should. I think NASA was generally a mistake. Do I know anything about it? No, absolutely not. But I think I, I I don't think we should be funding any sort of space exploration. I'm sorry. I love space. I would like to learn more about space. Why well, you can come to Bolero and like hang out with me and Bleep Bloop? I, I mean, I don't. I don't want to harsh your vibe on best. that. You know, this normally so it's kind of like like mostly dudes. Um, <laughs> what have we learned today? We planned to talk more about food, though, right? We planned when we when we were going to talk about this episode. We planned to talk more about food than yeah, we actually did. We, I want you all to know that we didn't intend for it to end up like this. But then we just sat down and the synergy happened. And sometimes you just gotta let it happen. I'm yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sometimes you just gotta let this stuff flow freely. Why do we think that we wouldn't eat these aliens? Oh, why? Here's the thing. Octop- octopi are, like, smarter than humans, right? That's but they don't Maggie eat Google us. that. What? But they don't eat no, us. No, but I'm them. saying we eat them. So you so, think we would eat the foreign, the, the aliens? I'm saying that cannibalism, it's somewhat recently, is a very disgusting thing to humans. Some cultures uh-huh. still do it. Uh-huh. Many cultures did it in the past. Mm-hmm. So that's off the table. But we'll eat any other creature, right? <clears throat> just about. We just have, about. Yeah, just yeah, about. Yeah, we've illegalized dog trade because people, you know, have, have soft spots to them. But the aliens come in. Why, I mean, why are we not viewing them as a potential food source? It depends how many they are and how plentiful they are and how we can cultivate them to grow yeah. in mass. Yeah, we don't know how they'll how they'll cook up either. Yeah, we don't know how they're going to taste. Yeah. That's a good point. Okay, we don't have to eat the aliens. How about this? How yeah. about the aliens come here, they eat us, and we're free? God bless America, home of the Whopper. Home that I love. <laughs> beside, <laughs> her, beside her and guide, guide her, her to the, the light that I ignite. shine <laughs> on above. <laughs> This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Sometimes it's easy to fall into the trap of thinking that everyone around you has gotten everything all figured out. But take it from me, pretty much everyone feels uncertain about their direction in life at some point in time. Same here, Josh. Careers, social life, family life. There's a lot of big decisions where we may not know all the answers. And we're not supposed to know all the answers, so it's okay to feel uncertain. But it's also good to do something about those feelings, and that's where therapy can help. Mm, I know a lot of people who had really, really important experiences in therapy. Discovering themselves, learning how to be the best version of themselves, finding their way when they felt lost. The benefits are endless. Yeah, we both think everyone should give it a try if it feels right, and BetterHelp is a great place to start. It's entirely online, flexible, and suited to your personal needs. You just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let th- Therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash hot dog today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash hot dog. All right, Nicole, <laughs> we've heard what you and I have to say all of it. Now it's time to find out what other whack it is <laughs> rattling out there in the universe with all our alien fans. It's time for a segment we call Opinions, Opinions are, are Like Casseroles. casseroles. how the aliens would say it. <laughs> That's what they would say. Thank you so much. 
I almost threw up just by like doing that <laughs> before we get to your opinions. Uh, we're going to review a review here. This is where we read a review on Apple Podcasts, which you should absolutely go ahead and fill one out. And please give us five stars or one star, whatever you feel we no, deserve. No, five stars, please. And this is from Mixed underscore Kids 6. Good show. And yes, children <laughs> listen to the show. Signed, <laughs> Child. Um, Thank you, Child. This was in response, I believe, Nicole, to us saying dirty, dirty, naughty things. And, and Shame. you asked if children listen to the show, and I said, no. But here we have a child. <laughs> Obviously, you can't fake. I said no. Are you sure I said no? I mean, no, I said no. I didn't think a child listened to the show. Um, huh. I didn't think they'd be interested in, like, the etymology of ravioli, but here we are. Uh, good on you, kid. Um, pretty good review. I, I'd give this review a four star. <laughs> You're you reviewing know? the review. Oh, yeah, review and review. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I give it five stars. Is it because they're a child? You're sort of like... Both. I feel like it wasn't descriptive enough. I want to know what kind of child they are. They're a big child, a small child? It says mixed underscore kid six. Yeah, they're, so they're we, probably six and they're mixed. Yeah, that makes sense. And they're... and then they, But then they side child. Huh. Well, yeah, four <laughs> stars. I'm sticking with the rating. Uh, let's get to our first opinion. <laughs> Hi, Nicole and Josh. This is Jake out of Ames, Iowa. Love the show. It's where Iowa State My is. wife and I were frying up chicken and latkes the other Heck night yeah. Fun. and then i realized shoot i don't have any sauce to put on my lock oh, and then i use? remembered we have this little part of our fridge where we keep all of our sauce packets yes, from various sir. restaurants and i put some taco bell fire sauce that's yeah. right on the lock and it was the bomb and i imagine Preach. that there are a lot of other sauce packets like that that would be phenomenal latka mm-hmm. toppings and my opinion is you should save those little packets of sauce and then use them Always. for things like latkes and they're gold. Incredible opinion. Um, I agree. First thing off the bat, this person does not have a single sauce in their fridge that is not in a leftover sauce packet. I don't know. I have at least 15 sauces in my fridge at any Me given too. moment. Me too. Um, but that said, leftover sauces from restaurants, which one of those do you think goes best on a latke? Uh, I would do a hoisin and sriracha mix. Dude. Yeah. Little little pho action. Yeah, yeah. Falatka. <laughs> Falakio. Uh, sorry, children. Um, I I was thinking of all the sauces at restaurants to put on a latka, and I ran through them all in my mind. The way your life would flash before your eyes. Wow, like a that. Rolodex? Like a Rolodex. Wow. Going, 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 bum, and bum, I bum, didn't bum. find one that would be bad on a latka. Huh. Which I think speaks maybe more to so, the versatility of latkas yeah, than sure, anything else. Sure. Uh, but standouts in that McDonald's Honey Mussy. Oh, for sure. They make a good honey mussy. Yeah. Uh, duck sauce, you know, like the kind of orangey goo. Sure. From a Chinese restaurant. That'd be fantastic. Hot mustard would be I great like on there. hot mustard, yeah. Ranch, obviously. Ranch and fried potatoes. Barbecue but sauce. But you can't keep ranch in the sauce packet drawer. Hmm? You can't keep ranch in the sauce well, packet Well, he said drawer. it was in the fridge, which oh, is... Oh, he keeps... Okay, never mind. I'm sorry. I wasn't right. listening. But sorry. also, no, you can put ranch in a drawer. They don't refrigerate it at the restaurants. It's just vacuum sealed. Are you sure? Uh, I've gotten really warm ranch. I, I mean, ranch on a... You go to a grocery store, the ranch isn't refrigerated if it's unopened. That's the grocery store, though. I know, but I'm saying, you know, fast food... Maybe, probably, maybe you're right. Maybe there. you're right. No, you're right. I'm dipping it in the ranch. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that's all there is to it. Um, I had one thing to say. Uh, Ames, Iowa is home to one of my favorite YouTube slash music artists. Her name is Leslie Hall. And I love her. And I love people from Ames, Iowa. Go Cyclones. <laughs> just had to say that hi my opinion is that i would rather know my food knows where it comes from i'd rather know where the animal came from what the animal's name is oh. it's i i'd rather know where the animal i eat is coming from than be completely removed from that animal i'm a farmer and that's my opinion shout out farmers do you want to do you want to take this one? Because I have to think on mine a little bit. Nicole has to think about this. Yeah. No, I think this is incredibly important. And honestly, I wish it was something that I practiced more than I currently preach yeah. because I am preaching about it often. But we often cook with a lot of animal viscera, right? With the offal. We cook with the head. We cook with the tongue, all this. And anytime we show specifically an animal head, I understand that it can be a somewhat jarring image for people to see. But we'll get a lot of people being like, you monster, how could you possibly show that? And it's like every chicken nugget that you've ever eaten... Had a face. It had a face, right? Yeah. Every anima, every steak, every hamburger, 
all this stuff. Until I was 10 years old, I didn't know that ground beef came from a cow. I thought mm. ground beef grew from the ground because nobody told me that. And we're so far removed from our food system. To me, that was just something that was bought in a package at the grocery store. Yeah. And now I had no idea to know. I, I once met a girl in college who did not know that chicken, the meat, was connected to chicken, the animal. I swear to God. Wow. She was in one of the top research institutions in the entire nation. Mm. And we get chicken thigh and she goes, what are these hard things? I'm like, they're bones. She's like, what do you mean? Chicken doesn't have bone in it. And so I think we are very, oh very far removed. And I think it's incredibly important. Eat less meat, eat higher quality meat. And I know that's a very privileged thing to say because high quality meat costs so much freaking sure. money. Um, and it's so easy to get a giant tube of ground beef from a grocery store. But there's going to have to be a reckoning with factory farming um, in the somewhat near future. And mm -hmm. I, I hope we can get back to more local sustainable Sure. Uh, the one thing that I thought of is knowing the animal's name. And I think personifying it is something that I have a little bit of an issue with. Because number one, every time I see Vital Farms eggs and I see the name of the chicken, I do feel a little bit bad that I'm taking this chicken's eggs. But at the same time... But those you, eggs are discharged, right? What do you mean? They're discharged? I don't know what that means. Like those eggs aren't going to have, or wait, hold on. I don't know. I don't know. Not all eggs are like fertilized that chickens lay. This are is like a very basic thing that now I'm questioning myself on. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I like don't you're know. not stealing the babies. You're eff 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 effectively stealing the menses. Oh, I'm stealing the periods? You're stealing the chicken periods, which like I think should be fair game. Okay, whatever. <laughs> Okay, whatever. <laughs> I don't know. But long story short, I feel bad whenever I say, like, hi, this is Dolly. Dolly is a chicken on our farm and she helped give you some of these eggs. And I'm like, thank you, Dolly, I think. Well, you should be grateful yeah, and you should feel bad. Yeah, I'm grateful and I feel bad. My uh, my family had a chicken in Iran named Pofak and there's pictures of Pofak in our family albums. Aww. And then I asked my mom, what'd you guys do with Pofak? She's like, ate him. <laughs> yeah, and what I'm else like, did you do with the chicken? And I'm like, didn't that suck? She's like, kind of. Got to do what you got to do. And I guess it's just different. Like, I guess factory farming, I mean, factory raising animals wasn't that prevalent back then. But yeah, I, I also know. think that people would feel differently about eating cheap produce if you had a card that said, hey, here's my name. I'm Mike. I'm the farmer yeah. that picked this and I get paid like $4 sure. a day because we've somehow made like modern day slavery legal within the agriculture yeah. industry. Um, yeah, look up the uh, Imoka Lee Farm Workers Union, I believe they're called. Uh, kind of blew the lid off uh, how I much tomato like farmers are actually getting paid. And it's a bummer. Yeah, food I'm, system's pretty messed up. Yeah, and if you really think about it for too long, you get real sad about mm -hmm. it. And, you know, we're all, we're all trying Hopefully our best out here. Hopefully we'll get better. You know? Hopefully we can enact some change sooner rather than later. I'd name an animal like Bozo. <laughs> You're eating Bozo the goat, you know? Have and you ever had funny. an edible animal? <laughs> like an animal that you would eat? Uh, no, I've had like pet. But you never had like, guinea an pigs, animal. and I've eaten a guinea pig. They're commonly eaten in Peru and Ecuador. It's called cuy, and it's delightful. And Cute. I also love guinea pigs, and I don't see anything wrong with eating something that I love. Next. Hey, Josh, Nicole, another Josh here. Wow. I just had this amazing realization outside of uh, Seattle on vacation. If you eat Ghirardelli sea salt caramel chocolate after eating flaming hot cheetos oh it gives off major peppermint vibes oh, oh. sick oh, chili mint that's interesting that sounds great i love both of those things separately never thought to eat them back to back like that yeah but here's the thing nicole they're What's lying uh, what they're lying have that, you that, done this before no i haven't done this before so how do you lying. know if the they're lying or not are so much different you're talking about like capsaicin heat from from chili powder you can't just call Versus someone like a liar a, a, like a that. mentholated sensation from peppermint. I think this man is lying for clout. Nicole, he is Why coming on they, here and he, Josh, he is I get our podcast is popular, us. but like it's not that popular. People are clout chasing on it. <laughs> no, I don't think that's no. true at all. Maybe it does feel that way for him. Give him a chance. I would like to try it and I believe you and you deserve to be heard. Um, also, <laughs> that just sounds like a fun day. Vacation, Seattle, little little like treat, mint, you know, little chocolate, what, sea salt, caramel, flaming is, hot Cheetos. Is Seattle known as the Windy City? Real question. Uh, no, Seattle is known as the Emerald City. Oh, what's the Windy City? Chicago. Oops. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> All right. I was thinking maybe he was in Seattle 
and his mouth was open and the wind was helping with the, you know. <laughs> um, uh, well, a crazy thing that I found <laughs> out though. No, no, no. Uh, no, 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 no. It's not stupid because I found out though that other cities sometimes also have wind. <laughs> Like, no, no, no. Think about this, Nicole. Have you ever like been outside in Los Angeles and it's, you feel something <laughs> almost sort of like, like blowing out, like it's just kind of, your hair is moving back and you're like, you're like, is that God, you know, like shouting and his breath is and it's no, but it, it's, it's called something, uh, called something like wind. So other cities can also have it. So that could be a possibility in Seattle. <laughs> Hey, Josh and Nicole, this is Jacob from your neighbors to the east in the Empire. Hey, Riverside 951, the baby. Girl Scout Cookies episode, and Josh said that he wanted to talk about cults, so I'm going to try and give that oh. opportunity to him. Yes. As we all know, cults have a distinct attachment to food, whether mm -hmm. it be restrictive diets like Om Shinrikyo, yes, the Rajneeshis poisoning salad bars, and of course, we all know not to drink the Kool Aid or flavor aid. Flavor aid, yep. Now, my question to you is, what cult has the best diet? Which oh. one would you not mind being part of just yeah. based on the food? Thank you. Uh, the Source Family. Actually, from my family? knowledge, the Source Family was one of those very new age hippie-ish cults mm -hmm. um, around the Los Angeles area, kind of like part of that like Topanga Canyon or that, that Laurel Canyon you know, music movement, a lot of psychedelics okay. and all that. But they opened up actually uh, a vegan restaurant and uh, it, it might still be there. Maggie, if you can look up the Source Family Restaurant in Los Angeles, uh, but they owned and operated a restaurant for a very long time. Cool. And as far as I know, I don't think they were one of like the murdery cults. I think they were one of the fun singing drum circle cults, but also still very culty. Uh -huh. That'd be my first one. The second one may be controversial to call it a cult, but it's called Landmark Forum. Why do you know so much about cults? I love cults. I just, people's capacity to believe has never stopped astounding me. And I guess as somebody who like grew up around a lot of people with very strong religious beliefs, mostly evangelicals uh, and Mormons, uh, but okay. also knowing that my family was Jewish, um, but also my mom was kind of into some weird culty stuff. Uh -huh. I've always just been fascinated because uh -huh. to me, religion, no, sorry, cult plus time equals religion. So sure, there's yeah. not a lot of, I get that, you know, delineation in my mind. Um, and so, uh, yeah, the uh, landmark form though is a very Tony Robbins -y self self-help thing. Mm -hmm. They have a lot of trappings of cults, uh, and Panda Express is actually like kind of formally associated with them. No way. It's a very, again, it's a very, this there's be been a, a lot of problematic stuff about landmark. Um, but it is a kind of very self self-helpy thing. But again, people thought that's what Nexium was, right? Nexium was just a kind of self-helpy thing. Um, yeah, on Wikipedia, it says companies such as Panda Express and previously Lululemon have paid for and encourage employees to take part in the Landmark Forum. Yeah, and then there's stories about like a, you know, Panda Express manager going to a Landmark Forum class and they're like stripped naked and berated in front of a bunch of people. So like very problematic. But that said, I mean, if I was part of Landmark Forum, I feel like I get free Panda Express for life and I do love me some orange chicken, baby. I don't really have an answer. I just I did just watch How to Become a Cult Leader on Netflix, it's which is uh, narrated by Peter Dinklage, and he does a great job. He did How to Be a Dictator or something like that. Oh, How to and Be a Tyrant. How to Be a Tyrant, whatever it was called. Yeah, and he yeah. did How to Be a Cult Leader. And I found a cult called the the Buddha Field Cult. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was uh, started by a known man named Andreas or Jaime Gomez. And he made them, they were like eating like very fresh. Oh, they right? were. Yeah, they like were like super, they're like super hot. <laughs> and they could, no dairy, no sugar. Gluten free, gluten -free organic. Gluten free, organic. And I'm like, Erwan. <laughs> so, Buddha Field. But I wouldn't want to, I don't think I could. Everyone thinks they wouldn't join a hard. cult until you join a cult. You huh? know what I mean? Everyone thinks that they're not the type that could ever join a cult. Well, that's the kind of people you know? that they want. That's the kind of people that they want. They, they want, want non-believers. And then because they know the non-believers, once they break them, they are true believers. Yeah, man. I couldn't, I couldn't start a cult. Yeah, you could. All right. Of course you could. You should. <laughs> well, on that note. Maybe you already do. Uh, you think we have already started a cult in Mythical Kitchen? Uh, we don't have a strong enough belief system. We don't have enough, like, internal language. Like, if we, say, had, like, garments that we, like, printed catchphrases on, that'd be one thing, but we don't. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't talk to me until I've had my hot dog water. Anyways, thank you so much for stopping by. Hot Dog is the Standards. we got new episodes out every Wednesday on the audio-only version. 
Uh, and then what? Sundays we got videos of us just sitting here. <laughs> yeah. If and if you want to be featured on opinions like casseroles, you can hit us up at eight three three dog pod one. The number again is eight three three dog pod one. Yeah. And on the off chance that you watch this and you're like, my God, I need to watch more of them. They're so intoxicating with their beauty and charm. We have other videos out on this very channel, unless you're listening to Spotify. It's, well, it's on a YouTube channel. I'll tell you what. It's called Mythical Kitchen. And sometimes we cook. And sometimes I We're ask, cult. I ask Tom Hanks about what happens when you die. And you eat uh, ramen with Post Malone shirtless. And other times we just sort of like make a grilled cheese. See you next time. <laughs> <laughs>